In this video, I'll be showing you how you can set up your Stream Deck to be able to control ProPresenter. Let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is head on over to elgato.com and find the downloads page. Here, we're just going to scroll down and we're going to find the Stream Deck software. You'll need to download that and install it on your computer. So here we have our Stream Deck software and this is what it will look like once you open it. In each of these squares is each of the buttons of your Stream Deck. So when we add buttons, we edit each one of these squares and how it looks on your screen is how it will end up looking on your Stream Deck. You can also add multiple pages to your Stream Deck down here. And now when I click this arrow, it'll go back through those pages. So you can see that we can start doing things relatively quickly and easily with the Stream Deck. But how do we add ProPresenter? So to do that, we're going to go up and we're going to click on this little button here, which will take us to the Stream Deck store. Once in our store, we're going to go and search for ProPresenter. And all we have to do is click install. Once ProPresenter is installed from the Stream Deck store, we'll get the option to import profiles that Renewed Vision has already made for us. So I'm going to click this and install the profiles just so we can have a look at them later if needed. Once that's done, we close this down. So this is what Renewed Vision's made for us and given us some examples. And you can see if we flick through these pages, we've got a whole bunch of different buttons, different colors and text to make it really easy. And that's how they've set it up. But how do we set up our own from scratch? Well, we're going to go up the top here to Profiles and we're going to go Edit Profiles so that we can set up a new profile. Once we hit the plus, we're going to double click and we're going to call it ProPresenter. And we're going to link it to ProPresenter, the application ProPresenter. What this does is when ProPresenter opens up in our computer, it'll automatically change the Stream Deck to this profile and show what we're making. Once we've set up that profile, we just close that window and we just need to change it to our ProPresenter profile here. It always starts with a welcome button which links to the Elgato Stream Deck website. So we're just going to click on it and click this bin to get rid of it. Once we're here, because we've installed our ProPresenter plugin, we can find ProPresenter down the bottom here of our software. And if we open that up, we can find all sorts of different actions and different ideas of what we can drag to our buttons. Now, one little tip here, if you're using the Stream Deck just for ProPresenter and a couple other functions, is to clean up this menu. To do that, we click on this icon here, and we can go through and untick everything that we don't need. So if I untick all of these ones, click done, we'll just have the options left that we're probably going to use. If we ever need something that we got rid of, we just go back in, we tick it again, and we're done. You can also drag it and reorder it as needed as well. So to add a button to our Stream Deck, all we need to do is to choose an action on the right hand side here and drag it onto a button. So if I choose my slide action, it creates the image automatically, and then it has all of this information that I can edit. When editing a button, there's a few different things we can do. We can change the image by going into this arrow. We can choose our own image from a file. We can create a new icon using the Stream Deck Icon Maker online, or we can open the Stream Deck Icon Library. If I just click this one, there's lots of icons built into Stream Deck, and I could choose any one of these icons, and it would change the picture on my square to any of these icons. So it's really customizable. But for now, we're going to leave it. I'm going to give this a title of next. And I'm going to come down and I'm going to change the color to green. So you can see straight away, it's really easy to start editing things. If I wanted my icon dark, I could do dark, or I can do it light. My action can be next or previous. So the next will take us to the next slide, previous is this slide before. And I can also go in and edit my text, and I'm going to bring this down to 10. I can also position my text top, bottom, middle as well, change the color, underline, bold. I can also change the font as well, so it's fully customizable. So I might go and add a previous button here, and you'll notice when I change it to previous, the arrow changes direction as well. And we're going to bring that down to 10 and change the color to green as well. After that, I'm going to create a clear button. Might make the clear red so that no one presses it by accident. 
and we might call it clear all and bring that one down to 10 as well. So you can see I've now got three buttons on my stream deck and I've got heaps of different possibilities that I could add as well. So when you're creating your stream deck, you want to think about the functions that are super useful to have nearby and at hand without having to dig in and find them or buttons that you want volunteers to press without having to click on Pro Presenter. So there's lots of options. After we've set up our Stream Deck, we need to actually connect our Stream Deck to ProPresenter. So if I click on one of these buttons, you'll see it says down here, unable to communicate with ProPresenter, and under connection, there's no connections. If I go to this button, there's no connections, and same with this button. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click add new connection, and you'll see here, we need our IP address for ProPresenter and the port as well. But where do we find that? Well, we open up ProPresenter and we go over to our preferences. And if I just click preferences up the top here, I'm going to choose network and I have my port number and my IP address. Now this information is covered up just in case because I don't want people having access to my port and my IP address, but you just need to copy and paste them over into your Stream Deck. So we go back to our Stream Deck here. I can go and type in my IP address and then I simply need to add my port number and then we should be good to go. So if I now click continue and now it's connected. So you can see under my clear all button, it's now connected to ProPresenter 7. If I wanted to add a new one and a different program, I could do that. Under this button, it's also connected and this one's also connected. So I currently have the Stream Deck app on my phone. And if I have that open, which you can see on the screen there, all I need to do is click next. And now I'm going through my presentation. If I click previews, it'll go back some slides. And if I click clear, it'll clear the slides. So you can see how easy it is to do this and how useful this could be. If we jump back to our Stream Deck software, we just wanna have a look at some of the other functions that we could do here and some of the things that I find useful. So we could go and choose our group. And what group allows us to do is it allows us to choose a certain group in our song. So we could choose verses, choruses, bridges, etc and jump around our song as needed. We could have different buttons set up for different groups and do it that way. We could go and do a button just for finding our mouse. So if you're someone who loses your mouse a lot, you can have a find my mouse button. You could have a capture button. So for your live stream, if you wanna have it start by pressing a button on the stream deck, you could do that. You could have a button for a macro. If you've got different macros set up in ProPresenter, they'd all be listed under there. You'd have a button for a stage message. You can also control things outside of ProPresenter. So some of the buttons that are sometimes useful for me, if I go into system and I go multimedia, I can drag that in. And instead of previous track, I can have an increase volume button. I can have a decrease volume button. And then I can also have a mute button. So when we're using ProPresenter, if there's any reason that we want to just turn the sound off, whether we're practicing and going through things before the service and our computer has sound, we can just press mute or turn it up or down as needed as well, right there, nice and easy.